This one here is a circuit diagram of a charging and discharging process of a capacitor which we are going to use in this episode of Physics is Easy with Mr. Jesse. In this tutorial, we are going to describe the process of charging and discharging of a capacitor using a circuit diagram and graphs to explain how the charge in the capacitor and the current through the circuit changes during the charging and discharging process. Now I am going to utilize this simulation to discuss what happens to the charges that are stored in the capacitor and the current that flows through the capacitor during the charging and discharging process. And I need you to always focus on the pointer for you to be guided accordingly. So now let's focus on this circuit here. As I flick the switch to uh, junction A, we have a circuit that is composed of the battery, the resistor, and the capacitor. So you see if I'm going to trace it, I actually have this circuit and the presence of the battery tells us that this circuit here is the circuit for the charging process. However, if I would flick the switch to junction B, my circuit is going to be composed of the capacitor, the resistor, and the switch so without the power supply therefore this circuit here is a circuit for the discharging process again in order for us to determine whether it is a charging or a discharging process we always have to focus on the presence or the absence of a power supply or the battery so once again without the battery this circuit is for the discharging process at the bottom of the simulation we have here the charge versus time graph and we also have the current versus time graph this charge here is the charge that is stored in the capacitor during the charging or discharging process and we would utilize the graph to interpret what happens to the charge stored in the capacitor and the current through the capacitor during the charging and discharging process so now let us look at the charge stored in the capacitor in a given unit of time or as time moves on and the current through the capacitor as time goes on so uh, we would assume that there are no charges stored yet in our capacitor that's why we don't have anything on this graph so to charge our capacitor we just have to flick the switch to junction a and again notice what's going to be depicted on the charge versus time and the current versus time graph here it is all right so this is our charge versus time graph, a charge stored versus time graph, and then the current versus time graph in the charging process. So let's interpret the charge versus time graph. Now CE, by the way, here is the maximum charge that can be stored in the capacitor. So the moment that we close the switch, the charge that gets stored in the capacitor approaches the maximum value CE until such time that when it has reached the maximum value CE, no charges um, get stored to the capacitor anymore because the charge has been fully, I mean, the capacitor has been fully charged. So if we notice, there will be an increase in the amount of charge in the capacitor until such time that the maximum charge that can be stored in the capacitor or CE is reached. And until that point, no charges are going to be added into the capacitor. So in this effect, since the charge that gets stored in the capacitor actually decreases over time, therefore that also results to a decrease in current because remember, current refers to the flow of charge. So if the charges or if the flow of charge decreases over time, therefore the current would also be decreasing as time goes on during the charging process. Now let us look into the charge in the capacitor versus time graph and the current through the capacitor versus time graph during the discharging process. And when we say discharging, this means the charges are already stored in the capacitor. So let's flick the switch to B and discharge the capacitor. Alright, so basically what happens 
is that from the initial charge that is stored in the capacitor uh, when we close the circuit and the discharging process begins charges would actually reach a point where in um, it's zero so charges exponentially decreased as a matter of fact so therefore charges would go out of this side of the capacitor through the resistor then deposited on the other side until such time that the potential difference across the capacitor becomes zero so when the potential difference decreases therefore current through the capacitor would also be decreasing so that is why we have this kind of graph so here is the summary of the charge versus time graph and the current versus time graph of charging and discharging of a capacitor and that concludes this tutorial. Once again, always remember, physics is easy with Mr. Jesse.